don't be fooled by the rocks that I don't got. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Style. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. Today I am talking about the Ben Affleck Jennifer Lopez relationship. We're gonna break it down, we're gonna analyze it. This was a requested video before I get into this. Few disclaimers. Uh, when I talk about celebrity relationships, I do not know these people. I do not know what they're like behind closed doors or in their personal life. I am strictly analyzing their relationship from their public personas. What they share with the world and we all have the same information. And while I don't think that we should be looking to celebrities as role models, generally speaking, because the vast majority of them are not, I do think sometimes that some of these celebrity relationships that get a lot of attention can offer some life lessons that we can translate into our everyday lives. So for most celebrities, I don't think that we should necessarily be copying their relationships. I don't even necessarily think their relationships should be very inspirational because a lot of them are not very healthy and a lot of them are really just for PR. But at the end of the day, because they are so public and because they do, for better or worse, they do set the tone for a lot of the way things go in society. I think it can be helpful to analyze these relationships and look at what we can take from them as far as life lessons and we can actually translate that into our own personal lives. This was a requested video to talk about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck and their relationship. Now as of filming this right now, as I'm filming this, I probably should look it up to see because the status of their relationship is kind of up in the air right now. As of of filming this they are still together but there are rumors there's a split coming which <laughs> when it happens will surprise no one and I'll get into that but you know by the time I edit this upload it and you watch this video who knows what the status of their relationship is I had kind of been avoiding <laughs> paying any attention to the Ben Affleck Jennifer Lopez relationship like this time when they reconnected and got back together, which I'll get a little bit more into the timeline of their relationship. But I was really trying to avoid it because I just thought it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was ridiculous that they were getting back together again. I don't really think they should have been together in the first place like 20 years ago, but whatever. But this was requested and I decided to watch her, I don't know what they call it, like a music video documentary thing. I decided to watch her movie, like her musical movie that she made, This Is Me Now, uh, which is sort of like, essentially promotion for her album this is me now and i also watched the documentary of the making of that movie the the greatest story never told all in preparation for this video and i have to admit after watching them like i didn't think they were that bad like they weren't phenomenal like i had no interest in watching them until people started requesting that i talk about this relationship but i don't think jlo came across like all that bad like i don't necessarily think she came across as someone that you know, isn't necessarily fully mentally healthy or anything, but I don't think she came across nearly as bad as everybody was sort of like making it sound like. And I think this just goes to show, and I mentioned this to, I think when I talked about Selena Gomez a few videos ago, it's amazing how people on the internet, like the mob mentality can really get people going. Like the mob mentality of people just, they decide that somebody is a villain and they just villainize them. And I think this happened with J-Lo. I know there's a lot of controversy around her music career and you know whether or not she stole songs, whether or not she actually sang her songs. Like there's a lot of drama around that. I'm not gonna get into that because that's not what this video is about. So I can understand why people would have issues with her in that sense, like musically. But people were so, it's, it's weird. People were just got so nasty. And it's just sort of like, you know, J-Lo funded her, her album and this whole movie documentary thing herself. A lot of people said that was stupid. I agree that was probably a stupid move, but at the end of the day, it was her money. There's worse things that celebrities are doing with their money. I mean, a lot worse things. J-Lo does touch on in the documentary that her mother was a narcissist. It was not something that was delved into very much. People started labeling J-Lo as a narcissist. And now I have to say, and I've talked about narcissism in other videos, I'm not gonna dive into that here. But one thing I do wanna point out when it comes to that is that there's a lot of misunderstandings about what narcissism is. J-Lo obviously has like a, 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 she obviously wants to be the center of attention. Like she obviously wants to, she wants fame, she loves fame, she loves and craves 
attention and fame and celebrity and all that kind of stuff. That's very clear from the documentary. Ben Affleck in, in the documentary kind of alludes to JLo's fame as being an addiction. And you know, that is possible, entirely possible. None of those things make someone a narcissist. A narcissist may exhibit those things. A narcissist may need to be the center of attention. A narcissist may be addicted to fame and celebrity and things like that. And narcissism is very common in celebrities. However, those things don't inherently make you a narcissist. And I think we need to be very careful of that because somebody can crave fame, crave attention, want to be the center of attention, take a lot of selfies, love the way they look in the mirror, spend a lot of time in the mirror looking at themselves, but also have empathy for other people, can also care about other people. That is the determining factor as to whether or not someone's a narcissist. It's really more whether or not they have the capacity for empathy. So you can be you know, addicted to fame or addicted to the sight of yourself or something like that or whatever and be a narcissist or not be a narcissist. Those things don't determine whether or not you are a narcissist. I think a lot of people with J-Lo doing this whole documentary and this whole thing about herself and like, is it clear that she craves attention? Is it a fair argument that she's maybe addicted to the fame and the attention? Yep, you could make that argument, absolutely. After watching both of the movies that she made, I don't believe that this gives you enough information to determine whether or not she is a narcissist. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't, I don't know. I, I'm just saying that based on this, based on you know what she's putting out publicly, based on her new album and the sort of like musical movie she made about it and the documentary and stuff you don't get enough information in this to determine whether or not she is a narcissist but one of the things that i did actually appreciate was JLo seemed to have a sense of humor about herself like she's in on the joke like she knows that she's had this like crazy almost humorous past love life and past relationships and she's like in on the joke like she gets it and I I appreciated the fact that she didn't seem to take herself too seriously in that sense. I found it kind of symbolic that it's very clear and I think JLo is admitting this I don't know how much true inner work she's doing on this problem as much as she's kind of talking as if she is doing work on this I don't know how much she actually is but JLo clearly has an issue with not being alone <laughs> like she does not want to be alone she does not want to not be in a relationship and I want to get into some of the reasons why a person specifically a woman would feel the need to never not be in a relationship but one thing I want to touch on in this that I think is very symbolic was that in her movie this is me now I mean JLo's kind of always been known as a dancer she's not really known as being an epic singer and she's not that old <laughs> you know what I mean like she's she is older for a pop star for sure but she's not like elderly right and she's she's kept up with dancing she's obviously very active she's obviously very fit which i'm going to get into a little bit more about her fitness and things like that in a, in a bit but and she does make reference at one point in the documentary about like not being able to keep up with these like 22 year old dancers and stuff like that or whatever which makes sense you know at her age which i is she 50 i think at this point it can be difficult to keep up with 22 year old professional dancers makes perfect sense, totally reasonable. I did notice that in her movie, This Is Me Now, the scenes where she was dancing with other people or with another person were really fun to watch. Like I really enjoy watching like dance heavy, you know, music videos or very dance heavy, mu I love musicals and stuff like that. Like very like dance heavy things. Like I, I love the art of dance. I love to dance. I love the art of dance. And I noticed that when she was dancing with other people, she was like, J she was J-Lo. Like it was very, it was very interesting to watch. But she had a song, it was, I don't know if it was the last song or towards the end of the movie where she was singing and dancing by herself. She was kind of like in the rain and she had an umbrella. I was like, oh my God, this is exciting because I love singing in the rain. Like I love Gene Kelly. I thought it was gonna kind of be a bit of like a tribute to that, which I think she tried to make it that, but it was really underwhelming and really not very good. Like I was really kind of surprised at how bad it was for somebody who like JLo is known for being a dancer. I mean, that's how she got her start in the industry was as a dancer. I just found it very poignant that her best dancing happened when she was either in a group or with a partner. And when she was dancing solo, it was not very good. And I point that out to say that I think that's very symbolic of her feeling a need to always be 
in relationship and not really being very comfortable on her own. I'm probably reading a lot into this, but I do think that there's a lot of symbolism there with the fact that even when she has a dance partner or a dance team or troupe or dancers around her, like she's much better. Whereas when she's just on her own, she's a little bit lost. I think that's symbolic of her like real life. <laughs> now a little bit about JLo's backstory. JLo has, she married her first husband who was a waiter. So she kind of like, it was almost like a Cinderella story in reverse. Like she was getting famous. She was just getting well known. She was getting fame and she kind of like found this very handsome waiter who was kind of poor and she married him and, and everything and they were like this very good looking couple and I remember they had a beautiful wedding. I remember seeing it in, in Style Magazine and stuff and got married. That didn't last very long. I think her relationship with Diddy was after that. She never married Diddy, but they were together for a while, which was very turbulent. Obviously, he's got issues, and I'm just going to touch on this. A lot of people are sort of vilifying J-Lo for not speaking up about Diddy sooner. I'm sure that J-Lo probably had like an NDA of some kind. I'm sure their relationship was, you know, contracted. We don't know what she was allowed to say and what she wasn't allowed to say. There's no possible way that Diddy was treating her well from based on what we know about Diddy and how he was treating people in his world, men and women. There's no possible way he was treating her well. We don't know to what extent. He might have been treating her better than some other people because she had an elevated celebrity status. I think we just need to be really careful and mindful about vilifying women who don't speak up against dangerous men because we don't know what the consequences would have been for her speaking up. But she was with Diddy for a while. They never married. I'm pretty sure it was after Diddy she went to Chris Judd. Chris Judd was, I think he was a backup dancer. He ended up being a pretty big choreographer. He was pretty big in the, the dance world for a while, I know. Obviously not the same celebrity status as her. They got married, then J-Lo essentially cheated on him with Ben Affleck. Went with Ben Affleck, got together with Ben Affleck, then Ben Affleck ended up cheating on J-Lo with Jennifer Garner. He ended up marrying Jennifer Garner. J-Lo ended up with Mark Anthony. She was with Mark Anthony for a long time. She dated Mark Anthony earlier on in her career. I don't know where that fell in the span of her marriages and long-term relationships. J-Lo was with Mark Anthony for a significant amount of time. He's the father of J-Lo's twins. They split. I'm pretty sure that's when she was in a, a pretty long-term, I would say, relationship with Casper Smart, who was a backup dancer. So they split. She ended up with A-Rod. Her and A-Rod had a... Uh, they were together for quite a while. They were engaged. That split happened. And to be totally honest with you, I kind of stopped paying attention around that time. So I don't know if there was anybody else in there. Maybe there was, maybe it wasn't public. I don't know. Again, keeping up with JLo's love life would be a full-time job. And she ended up basically back with Ben Affleck. They dated for a while. They got married. And here we are in the present day. So that's essentially JLo's love life summed up. I find it interesting how JLo kind of weaves between men that she has power over and men who have power over her or a higher status level, so to speak, than she does. And she kind of weaves in between the two. So oftentimes women will go for men who have less money status power than the woman. If the woman doesn't fully feel safe around men or doesn't feel safe connecting to her own feminine energy, feels a need to put up a masculine shield, oftentimes women will gravitate towards men who have less power than the woman because the woman will falsely in reality perceive that as safer. In a situation of JLo who is just now starting to get famous, she was just starting to get some success, make money, she ends up with a waiter. Now she would have more money than him. She would hold more power in the relationship than him. She had more fame. She had more status. She was kind of like plucking him out of obscurity. It was kind of like she was the Prince Charming and he was the Cinderella, so to speak. Then she say goes to someone like Diddy, who we know has a lot of power and a lot of influence. She, you know, she ended up getting arrested while she was with him. You know, he's stashing guns places. We all now know about a lot of his issues and stuff. She's now in this world of a lot of dangerous men. She goes to someone like Chris Judd, who 
you know, well, is a, is a successful choreographer and, you know, is was making a name for himself in his own field as a dancer, she still had more fame, money, power, and influence than he did. It kind of makes sense how a woman who may not be fully comfortable feeling safe around men, for example, or a woman who sees her feminine energy as being wrong, and she feels like she needs to embody her masculine energy, it makes a certain amount of sense why she would go for a man who is a little bit more in his feminine energy. He's someone who in society at least is perceived as being weaker. Those relationships aren't gonna tend to last because generally speaking, most men at their core are gonna wanna feel respected. They're gonna wanna feel respect. And a woman is gonna wanna be with a man she feels like she can respect. When the woman has this sort of like power dynamic over a man, she's probably not going to be able to respect him. Now, I'm not saying that money, power, influence are the only things that garner respect. However, it's very likely in dynamics like this, where you have one partner who has significantly more money, significantly more power, and they're choosing a partner just because they have less of that, it, usually you're going to have that weird a relationship with respect in that in that situation and it makes a certain amount of sense for example someone like Jayla would end up with somebody who you know her first husband who was a waiter who was not making much money it would make sense that she would then feel like she couldn't respect him because she had so much more masculine drive masculine direction money power success than him you can see where a relationship like that would probably not work out very well she ends up in a situation with someone like Diddy who and I've talked about Diddy in other videos and stuff, has a lot of toxic masculine energy, a lot of lording power over people, a lot of signs that he probably is a sociopath. We know he's a very dangerous person. That probably made J-Lo feel very unsafe around him and men in general. It makes sense that her next relationship would go to somebody who had less power, less influence in the world, because then she would want to go back to her being the one in power in the relationship. Now, I don't think relationships are necessarily healthy if you're playing in power dynamics like this, but it is very common nowadays. So I want to kind of point out how this happens. It tends to be that J-Lo tends to alternate between her being the one with the power and then going with someone that has the power. She's alternating, right? Because then with Chris Judd, I'm going to take a guess that she probably didn't respect him that much. And I'm not saying because he didn't deserve respect, but I do remember an interview with him talking about his split from J-Lo and that it was very obvious that J-Lo and Ben Affleck were having an affair before they even came out publicly. And I remember Chris Judd saying that his father was telling him to fight for Jen, to fight for their marriage, to fight for their relationship. And he was like, uh, you know, I'm not going to, if she wants to be with him, I'm just gonna let that happen. I'm not saying whether that choice was right or wrong, but that does lend itself to him being a more passive person. Should he have fought for her? That's completely his decision. It's up to him. However, it lends itself to showing that him being a more passive person probably means he was more passive in a lot of other areas of their life. A passive man is not going to feel stable for a woman. With someone like J-Lo who already clearly feels a need to be in the power dynamic in her relationship because she probably doesn't feel like she can let that masculine shield, that guard down. A passive man, while it might feel safe for her at first, she's not going to be able to respect him and she's not going to feel that stability. I'm not justifying her cheating on him or anything, but I'm saying it makes sense why that relationship probably wasn't going to work in the long term. As far as J-Lo and Ben, I don't know if you youngins, you young people here on YouTube, if you weren't old enough to remember the Benefer days. I don't know if I can fully express to you how big a deal Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez getting into their relationship the first time was in pop culture. They started, I mean not them personally, I'm sure it was a PR thing, but like they were the first couple to combine names. Benefer was the first time, like I know people think of Brangelina, the term Brangelina came after Benefer. Benefer was the original combining names together. And when I tell you, like social media was a thing back then, but it was, we didn't have as many social media outlets. There was not as much stuff going on, like internet wise back then. I mean, it was still a big thing, but like the world was different back then. We're talking 20 years ago, right? The phenomenon that was Benefer, it was unlike I think anything anyone had ever seen before. It made the whole like Taylor Travis stuff that's going on now. <laughs> 
that seem like nothing. They were so iconic. And it's interesting looking back on it, like 20 years later. Yes, J-Lo was a huge celebrity at the time, music and movies and stuff. Yes, Ben Affleck was a huge celebrity at the time, actor, director, Oscar winner. So they were both big celebrities. I mean, absolutely. But the fact that them dating was such an insane phenomenon, looking back on it now, 20 years later, that had to have all been PR. Like it had to, because there's really no other reason why we would have been so caught up in their relationship. Because like there are other celebrities that have been together that were a big deal. And I will admit like Ben was more private and he's admitted he's been more private. JLo obviously wanted more attention. She wanted, you know, to be seen and to be known. That's more her thing. This had to have been a, a PR plan. Now I'm not saying that they weren't together. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't, I don't know. But the phenomenon around their relationship had to have been PR because in hindsight, like, yes, they were huge A-list celebrities that were getting together, so it was a big deal, but, like, the whole Benefer thing and the way that they were being promoted together and everything, like, that whole phenomenon had to have been a PR marketing plan. So their whole thing was so epic. It was such a big deal, and it was always pretty clear that, like, J-Lo was comfortable with the attention and that Ben Affleck was kind of, like, not that comfortable with the attention. And, you know, he was a celebrity. He was used to attention. He understood attention. He'd been in high profile relationships before. Their whole thing was like a phenomenon. They were engaged, they were planning this epic wedding, and then all of a sudden they split. It was, I mean, this was the media story of the time. Like it literally makes like the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey thing look like nothing. Like in that time period, that was all anybody wanted to talk about and all anyone wanted to focus on. It was huge. They did a movie together, G. Lee. I didn't see the movie. I think a lot of people didn't. It's considered one of the worst movies ever made. A lot of people have said that contributed to their breakup. It's possible. The only reason why that would really happen probably would be because like if it was a relationship essentially to help their careers and it wasn't helping their careers, it was actually hurting their careers, you could see where that would make them split. A lot of times when you have two people in a relationship in the same industry it gets a lot into competition and power struggles and things like that. I think if Ben felt like being with J-Lo was going to inhibit his professional career, you could see where he would get resentful, especially with him not being that comfortable with the sort of like celebrity spotlight aspects of things. I know he's talked before about his drinking problem. I don't necessarily know where his alcoholism and things like that were in like in what stage it was in at any point in time as far as this timeline goes. As I've talked about in other videos, when you're dealing with a partner with an addiction problem, it, it's kind of a recipe for disaster in a relationship. You can't have a healthy relationship with someone who's an addict, an active addict. And I have other videos talking about that, but it was pretty clear that Ben Affleck had basically been seeing Jennifer Garner. They did a movie together. There were a lot of indications that those two had become an item. And so a lot of people believe that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner were having an affair. And he went from one Benefer to the next Benefer. And Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner ended up getting married. They had three kids together. They were together for quite a while. And he famously cheated on her with the nanny and that fell apart. They're split. They seem like they've been able to co-parent their kids relatively well. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner always seem to make more sense because they both seem comfortable with celebrity, but they both like to stay out of a lot of the excess celebrity spotlight. It just seemed like they made a better match, but infidelity, addiction issues, those kind of things are gonna deteriorate any relationship. JLo ended up with Mark Anthony, and the interesting thing about her relationship with Mark Anthony, and one of the reasons why I think it probably lasted as long as it did, I mean, partly they had children together. I think oftentimes when, I'm not saying that kids solve problems in relationships by any means, so I'm not encouraging that, but I do think oftentimes when you do have a common interest in raising children, it can give people a common focus in a relationship if both people value being healthy parents. JLo and Mark Anthony, I think, had a lot in common musically. I think they have worked together professionally since their split, so they obviously had a bit better um, working relationship. In reality, I think, you know, JLo kind of was moving more into the Latin music world. That was an area where Mark Anthony was already kind of making a name for himself. Mark Anthony wasn't as mainstream a pop star as JLo was, 
but they both were relatively successful in their specific areas. There was overlap in those areas. They tended to work well together. So it didn't seem like, at least on the surface, like there was a really giant power dynamic within the two. But I always heard, and I don't know how true this is, but I always heard that Mark Anthony really put J-Lo up on a pedestal. Like he really admired her. And I think that that probably was one of the reasons why that relationship worked better. Now again, people are gonna point to narcissism in that situation, and that can be a sign of narcissism, but generally speaking, relationships do tend to work better. I mean, this kind of goes into a little bit, I have another video talking about this, but I'm not a big fan of the line that relationships work better if the man loves the woman more than the woman loves the man. I think men and women love differently, so I don't necessarily think that like that's specifically true, but I do think that relationships tend to be healthier when the man admires the woman, but the woman can still respect the man because at its core, men tend to feel love by being respected and women tend to feel love by being cherished. So the fact that he had her up on a pedestal, in a sense, if he was truly cherishing her for who she was, yet she could still respect him, we don't know if that's true or not, but like if that was the case, it would make sense that their relationship would be more solid. Because that tends to be the healthiest relationship. And that was her longest relationship, which makes a certain amount of sense. But that relationship didn't work out, I'm not really sure specifically why. She was with Casper Smart, who again, backup dancer, she was in power, she was in control in that situation she was older he was the backup dancer and you know that tends to kind of be her default I, because I think that that's where she gets to then feel safe being the one in sort of the masculine energy in the one in control in a relationship that's like her safe zone doesn't necessarily get her the healthiest relationship but I think she often defaults to that as a safety mechanism very common in women today a lot of women feel safer in their masculine energy because they don't feel safe around men so they enact their own masculine energy and put up a masculine shield and they attract a more feminine male or a male that that the woman feels like she has power over because it gives her a false sense of safety the problem is is that that more feminine male or that male that she has power over is probably not going to be a safe partner he's not gonna be stability. He's gonna be the feminine energy in the relationship. It's gonna reinforce her idea that men are unsafe because he's gonna be unstable. Feminine energy is not stable. Feminine energy is in flow. Feminine energy is movement. I'm not saying women can't be stable, but feminine energy is not stable. Masculine energy is the grounded stability. So whoever holds the masculine energy in the relationship is the grounded stability. Whoever holds the feminine energy in the relationship is, is the movement, is the flow. If you as a woman don't don't trust men so you become the grounded stability in your relationship and you attract a partner who's more in flow who's more like go with the flow kind of you know unstable and stuff it's gonna reinforce your idea that men aren't safe because a man like that is never gonna feel safe you're gonna get a false sense of safety because you're gonna feel that control aspect of like well I'm I'm stable so I can control the situation but you really won't be able to control him and, and controlling isn't really healthy anyway however it gives a woman a false sense of security but then she ends up attracting a man who's very unstable and it reinforces her idea that men are unsafe. Whereas as a woman, if you can get comfortable with a man who has grounded stability, isn't controlling, but has grounded stability, that will feel so much safer and you will be able to put your guard down and be able to move and flow and actually relax into your feminine energy. You may argue that's not the type of relationship you want and that's fine, but that's usually the healthiest relationship. So then JLo ends up with someone like A-Rod. Now, JLo and A-Rod made more sense than probably any of her past relationships. I think A-Rod, once he was retired, A-Rod while he was playing probably wouldn't have given her grounded stability because athletes, when they're currently playing, their schedules are so erratic, they're traveling everywhere, that that tends to lend itself to being less stable. They can be very masculine, very focused, very driven, but usually pro athletes, their schedules tend to be so erratic that it's hard for them to have a stable relationship. But retired A-Rod, they were a very good looking couple. He seemed more grounded and stable, at least on the surface. It seemed like J-Lo could kind of relax and be herself more. 
I feel like a lot of the images around them, like he was kind of taking her hand, he was taking the lead in the relationship, like he seemed like he was more of a grounded, stable partner. I think their relationship made more sense than any of the other relationships she'd been in. Unfortunately, it ended up in infidelity. We know JLo's been unfaithful in past relationships, so you kind of wonder how much value she puts on fidelity, but I would never judge someone for leaving somebody when it comes to infidelity. I have a video actually about infidelity that I posted recently, so if you wanna check that out. I don't judge anybody who decides to end a relationship if there is infidelity, because it does deteriorate trust. So that relationship falls apart even though, I mean, it's sad, unfortunately, because I really do think that they made the most sense. If it is because of his infidelity, which it does look like it probably is, that's on him, it's his responsibility, he's the one who cheated. That relationship ends, again, I don't know what the timeline was after that happened, but now Jen and Ben are back together. The fact that I never thought that they made sense in the first place, when they got back together, I was like, I don't even wanna hear about it, I don't even know about it, and they got married. I've been completely convinced that this was just a PR thing from the minute they got back together. I was like, you know, this has gotta be some kind of like celebrity distraction or a PR move for their career or something like that. After having watched the documentary, with the two of them. Like I'm even more convinced that they have no business being together. I would say generally speaking, and I'm sure there are exceptions to this, but generally speaking, I don't think going back to an ex is ever a good idea. The rare exception I will say is if two people were maybe very young when they got together and you know, were still figuring themselves out and were just sort of not really grown and mature and you know adults and stuff and then they go off they kind of you know get themselves together whatever and then they reconnect years later uh, you know maybe if they were high school sweethearts or college sweethearts or something and then like they reconnect years later when they actually like have their lives together and stuff maybe i think also too if you have somebody who i would say both people generally speaking if if both people have done a lot of work on themselves and they've healed a lot of the issues that they had while they were in the relationship, maybe giving it another try could be a possibility, but that's really rare. Generally speaking, I'm of the belief that like if it didn't work out once, it probably won't work out again. I think there's a couple different reasons why people try to make things work again. In this particular situation, I think it's ego. I really do. I think it's ego, maybe on both of their part. I think definitely on JLo's part. Ben's part, I, I don't really know. It's hard to know because he, as much as he is in the public eye, I think he does tend to keep himself a little bit more private. But I think with JLo, it's a little bit ego. It's like, I'm gonna prove to everybody that like, I can get the guy that I wanted 20 years ago. And almost like a completing the trauma cycle. Like, you know, she had this, hugely epic public relationship that fell apart and i think some of this is like i'm gonna prove to everybody that like this relationship that didn't work that everybody thought you know was a mess that we had a failed movie and it, everything fell apart i'm gonna prove to everybody i can make it work this time and it's not looking like it's working very well and i think some of this is like is her ego trying to prove to everybody that like i can make this work and like complete the sort of the cycle it's probably not gonna work because relationships that come from ego rarely ever work because they don't tend to come from like true soul alignment they're just coming from trying to prove things with your ego Daylo is clearly someone who can't be alone and there's a few different reasons why women feel like they can't be alone with men these are similar reasons they also have like a they need their mommies <laughs> or they need someone to take care of them or they need someone to do the free labor of a wife or something like that like those things can be a factor with men with women I mean I guess it could be like searching for a father figure someone to take care of them I don't think that's the case in this situation because JLo can take care of herself, so she's not really looking for like a, a sugar daddy so much. I don't even think she's really looking for a father figure because she tends to, a lot of her relationships, she tends to, to be the father figure. Like she tends to be like the man of her relationship. Not all of her relationships, but I think in quite a few of them, she was kind of like the, the, the masculine provider in the relationship. There's a few different reasons why women tend to feel a need to always be in a relationship. One thing which, as much as I do think that, that JLo's got some ego stuff going on for sure, and I do think that her getting back with Ben could be ego, there's an ego aspect to a woman who needs to stay in a relationship. I don't think that this applies to JLo, but I wanted to throw this in because I have seen this happen. I actually feel like Kim Kardashian kind of emulates this type of 
always needing to be in a relationship a little bit more. It's it's an ego thing of like, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna be in a relationship, but like I'm so desirable and men want me so much that I just can't stay single. I feel like Kim Kardashian does that a lot. That's an example of, I think, a woman who's just living from her ego, who can't stay single because she feels like if she's single, she's not seen as desirable. And it really isn't about the guy, it's just really about the image. That's one reason. And I don't necessarily think it's going on with J-Lo. As much as I think J-Lo is tied to her ego, I don't think that that's really at the root of what's going on with her as far as her constantly needing to be in a relationship. Another reason why women tend to always feel like they need to be in a relationship is wounding in her feminine energy. If a woman has a lot of wounding in her feminine energy, because the feminine always wants to feel full. The feminine wants to feel fullness. The feminine wants, I mean, because literally if you think about sexually, the feminine is filled, right? So the feminine wants to be filled, whether it be sexually, whether it be with love, whether it be with the food, whether it be with anything, the feminine wants to feel full. She wants to feel the fullness of life, of love, of everything. And that's natural, that's normal, especially for a woman in her feminine energy, because we all have masculine and feminine energies within us. So in a man's feminine energy, it can be that same way as well. However, with a feminine cord woman, fullness and a desire for fullness is totally normal. However, when that desire for fullness or that need to constantly feel filled, whether it be to be filled sexually or whether it be to be filled with love or something and that becomes a neediness and you need to latch on to anyone or anything just to feel that fullness because you're you're incapable of like sitting with not feeling full or you're incapable of bringing in fullness for yourself and it becomes like a neediness and a desperation and you start becoming willing to put your own self your own needs your own safety aside that that's usually when you find a pick me girl like a pick me girl is like the ultimate in like a wounded feminine right in like a, i'm gonna compromise myself just to get fulfillment from a man or just to get fullness or just to be in a relationship or just to be with someone i'm just gonna put all my needs all my you know my safety my anything i'm gonna put that aside and i'm just gonna do whatever it takes to like be with someone and be in a relationship because like I just can't feel that emptiness of not being with someone. That's a wounded feminine. And I have, I have more videos talking about masculine and feminine energies and wounding and things like that. Well, I do think that JLo's kind of core issue is being really stuck in her masculine and having a masculine shield up. Oftentimes when you have that level of, as a woman, a connection to your masculine, like that kind of attachment to your own masculine of never feeling like you can let your guard down, you can feel also a lot of wounding in your feminine because you don't feel comfortable in your feminine energy your feminine energy then becomes very wounded so you have that protective shield about you of that masculine shield about like I have to be in the masculine I have to be in control I have to be the strong one I have to be the powerful one you know I'm gonna be the man in the relationship and stuff like that that can also cause a lot of wounding in your feminine energy because you don't feel comfortable in your feminine energy so if you're kind of feeling ashamed or blocked off from your feminine energy, that can often feel wounded and then you can feel this like neediness. You can feel this this emptiness and then you're not comfortable with the emptiness even though you're kind of pushing away men with your masculine energy, but your wounded feminine is like, but I need men. It can put you in that very push-pull thing which can make you jump into relationships really quickly and then quickly get out of the relationship and then jump into another relationship and then quickly get out of it that combination of kind of essentially your masculine shield and your wounded feminine can oftentimes get you that push pull in a relationship of like, oh, I need to be with a man. Ooh, I'm afraid to be with a man. It's a push pull thing, right? Cause you've got your masculine shield and you've got your wounded feminine and they're fighting with each other. I do think that that's a possibility with JLo. I also think too, and this is common with anyone, so you can find this in men or women, but I think this is probably the most likely thing that's happening with JLo. There are a lot of people that need to be in a relationship so they can look at someone else and they don't have to look within themselves. And it's kind of ironic because when you have someone who's so obsessed with fame and celebrity and their own image and their own look, you would think that that person would want to look at themselves. But oftentimes people that end up in like a serial dater or have been like these sort of can't be alone, constant relationships 
because they can focus on the relationship and the other person and they never have to actually sit and be alone with themselves and like hear their own thoughts and hear their own voices. It's, it's, it's like an addiction. It's like, you know, somebody who starts to sit with themselves and is like, I can't handle this, I need to drink. Or I can't handle this, I need to do some drugs or something like that. Like it becomes a distraction from not having to just sit and be with yourself. If you're not comfortable within yourself or looking at yourself, it can oftentimes be like, well, let me just go to a relationship so I can, I can be in us and I can pay attention to this person and I can focus on the relationship. Oftentimes it tends to be people who get involved in really chaotic relationships because the chaotic relationship tends to be even more distracting. So it's somebody who just is not comfortable just like sitting and being with themselves. I think that's probably what's happening with JLo. I think that's, pr I mean, there's probably a combination of a lot of different things, but I think that's a very obvious thing. And I think she even kind of has admitted that. She does talk a lot as if she has been doing a lot of inner work. I hope she has. I, you know, I hope, I hope anybody that feels like they need help gets the help they deserve. I don't know how true it is or how much it's just for the show or anything like that but with celebrities we never know i don't know specifically why ben would go back to to j-lo he might be trying to right wrongs from his past especially you know he says he's clean and sober now it might be a way of him trying to right wrongs from his past there was an interesting conversation in the documentary where i think ben asked jen like if she had forgiven him for the past he didn't say specifically for what, but just forgiven him for the past. She made an interesting comment that she's forgiven him for everything, but she's still working on forgiving herself. That might be true. That might just be for show. I don't know. I think that's a really dangerous place to be in. When you're really quick to forgive somebody else, but you're taking a really long time forgiving yourself, that can be a really dangerous place to be in in a relationship, I think, because oftentimes people in relationships, I think if they, when they start, doing inner work, they start doing healing, they start taking accountability. I'm not anti-accountability. The push for accountability nowadays in people and people actually taking a look at their own life, taking a look at, okay, how did I get to where I am? Like, how am I responsible for the things that are happening to me in my life or have happened to me in my life? I think those things are valid. They're helpful. They can go too far though. And unfortunately, I think women are a lot more susceptible to this in general, but I think anybody can be susceptible to this. When you focus so deeply on personal accountability and taking on all the responsibility on yourself, it can be really easy to ignore the faults of other people and ignore the red flags in relationships. So when I hear a person say, well, I've forgiven you for everything, but I'm working on forgiving myself. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's just where they are. But what I hear is I'm ignoring everything that you did and I'm just going to blame myself for everything that's not healthy in a relationship regardless of of who did what or what situation i think that the conversation around accountability is a valid conversation to be having however if people start using the term accountability to make people ignore red flags and ignore signs of abuse or signs of harm or ignore other people doing things wrong because they're so busy looking at their own accountability people can end up in really bad situations and really bad and i think women are especially susceptible to this i i use the example a lot that you know say for example you decide to walk through like a really bad neighborhood you know it's a horrible neighborhood it's a crime world neighborhood and you decide to walk through with your wallet hanging out and a whole bunch of money hanging out and whatever and you're walking around and somebody robs you at the end of the day you can look back on that situation and be like that was really dumb i should not have been walking through that neighborhood alone with my money hanging out I need to learn a lesson from that that I should not do that because that was a bad decision however the person that robbed you is still a criminal the person that robbed you still stole something from you that wasn't theirs they still committed a crime and your irresponsibility did not make their crime any less of a crime they took something from you that wasn't theirs that's theft and that's a crime. And I think while it's valid to look at your life and look at the situations that you've been in and say, okay, how did I get myself in that situation? How can I be smarter in the future? How can I make better decisions? How can I not allow myself to be taken advantage of? Like, where can I have better boundaries? Where can I make better decisions? Like all that stuff and that, that accountability is absolutely valid and important. It doesn't excuse somebody actually 
hurting you or abusing you or committing a crime or it doesn't actually excuse other people's bad behavior. And that's where I think we need to be very careful when we start getting into the extremes. Accountability can be a great thing, but we can't start using accountability to take other people's misbehavior, other people's abuse or things like that and just be like, well, it was on me. Two things can be true. You can look at what you did wrong in a situation, but if somebody actually committed a crime or did, or did something wrong, like they could be in the wrong as well. And I think when we get into the accountability thing, we need to be really careful of, of how we we go about that. There's also the conversation about the fact that in our current society we only push accountability on women and we never expect men to take accountability. That goes into a lot of the hypocrisy especially in the manosphere which I'm going to do a video about at some point. It's been highly requested but just something that I want to bring up that Taking accountability for things can be good. Looking at yourself, looking at how you contributed to a situation can be good. But please don't use it as a way to ignore other people's red flags, ignore other people's bad behavior, because you're just gonna keep getting yourself into a bad situation and keep blaming yourself for it. Ben and Jen are rumored to be headed for a split again. Surprising to no one. I don't think anybody thought this relationship was gonna work. There's been a lot of buzz about like, oh, Ben Affleck always looks miserable, which I kind of feel like he always kind of looks like that. Like that's kind of like always been his Thing. I mean, we all know he's actually in love with Tom Brady. So if he could just marry Tom Brady, he probably would be happy. <laughs> There's a lot of people saying that like, oh, Ben Affleck looks so miserable. Uh, free Ben Affleck, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, oh, as, as if Ben's being held hostage or something like that or whatever. I don't know how true this was, but supposedly there was like an inside source that claimed that, that Ben was claiming that his marriage to J-Lo was temporary insanity and stuff. And that's why they're headed for a split or something like that or whatever. I do not feel bad for Ben Affleck because here's the thing. He knew what he was getting himself into. Like they dated 20 years ago. He knows what she's been like this whole time. They get back together after all this time. They were together for a while. They got married. Like he knew what she was like. He went into this. Like it, it, you can't, you can't say that it was temporary insanity. Like if he's going to claim insanity, it's got to be that he just is insane because it's not like this was somebody that he just met and pretended to be somebody else. And he didn't know, like, you know, they were together for years before they were together again. He knows what she's been like this whole time. Like at this point, him getting into this relationship, he went in willingly. It may not work, it may not work out. He may have gone into it with the best of intentions and it didn't work out, but like, it's not like she blindsided him, let's be real. Ben actually had an interesting statement in the documentary where he talked about how he wasn't comfortable with fame and J-Lo was much more comfortable with fame and he, you know, he was trying to stay out of the spotlight and, you know, keep out of fame and trying to kind of keep her from the spotlight, so to speak. And that he was like, it's like dating a boat captain and being like, okay, well, I'll, I'll be with you, but we can never go in the water kind of thing. I'm paraphrasing, but that's part of the deal, right? Like, again, you can say whether or not someone wanting fame or someone not wanting fame is a good thing or a bad thing or whatever. But at the end of the day, if you meet someone and they want fame and you don't, you have to take that into consideration. Like, can you live with this person wanting fame? Because if you make this person give up fame, they're probably gonna resent you. And this would go either way. I mean, this would go if he was the more famous one and she wasn't comfortable with fame or things like that. People are who they are. And I think oftentimes you get into a relationship and you think, well, I'll be in a relationship with this person, but they have to change. It's like, if you don't wanna date a smoker, don't date a smoker. Like, don't date someone who smokes and then try to get them to quit smoking. You know, you have to accept people for who they are. That was a big life lesson that I had to learn. If you can't accept someone how they are at this moment, then don't get into a relationship with them. I think women are especially susceptible to this. Men are susceptible to it as well, but I think women especially, because for women, we often see the potential in a guy. So we marry the potential and we don't marry who the man is. And that's not to say that two people in a relationship can't grow and change. And hopefully, you know, over time in a long-term relationship, people are gonna grow and change. However, if you're gonna enter into a relationship, you have to be okay with who that person is at that moment. You cannot get into a relationship with somebody and hope that they'll become someone or something else. It's a recipe for disaster. Don't do it. And it sounds very much like as much as Ben has kind of admitted that he's come to that conclusion, it does kind of feel like he hasn't really, you know, him wanting to be more private, not wrong. JLo wanting to be more public, not wrong. If they can't accept that about each other, the relationship isn't gonna work. It doesn't make one of them right or wrong. It just means that their relationship is probably not gonna work because they're not on the same page about 
something that's a pretty big part of their life. I mean, you know, them both being celebrities in the public eye, them ha being on the same page about how public they're going to be about their relationship is a big thing. I mean, it's a big part of the relationship. And if they can't be on the same page about that, it's just probably not going to work long term. I want to touch briefly on JLo and body image. And I found it really interesting when she was talking about like being a middle child and that she discovered that she could get attention and praise and everything from sports when she was growing up and she got really into sports and track and field and things like that because those achievements got her attention and being a middle child she felt like she was kind of always overshadowed that's a very common dynamic for middle children and stuff i do find it very telling that she felt such a desperate need for approval and got it with her achievements in sports when she was young and feeling a validation from fame, achievements, accomplishments in her career, and also the fact that she has such a, I mean, Jayla looks great, don't get me wrong, but like, she has such an obsession with her body and her body image and keeping her body looking a certain way, pushing herself physically so much. I'm not, I'm not at all discouraging people from being healthy and being fit and caring about fitness and stuff like that, but with her, it seems excessive and it seems to be an obsession. I think that's very common nowadays in women where they actually feel loved and validated based on their achievements and accomplishments. So they become obsessed with those achievements and accomplishments. If it's in sports or something physical, that oftentimes can then translate into an obsession with body image, your body looking a certain way. And again, I'm not discouraging anybody from being healthy and fit and things like that, but I do think that very often, and I'm, I'm seeing a serious increase in really toxic diet culture being pushed and really dangerous body image stuff. Like I, I'm seeing a lot of really dangerous trends around looks and body image in women in the media. And the JLo documentary just touched on it a little bit, but I think that, I think we're gonna see it get a lot worse. That's oftentimes at the root of it is is a little girl who felt like she had to achieve something or she had to fit into a specific box or something in order to get love and validation. And that little girl grows up and she's still desperately trying to get those achievements and to try to perfect herself or control herself or control her body to be loved and validated. And that can easily turn into an obsession, it can turn into an addiction, it can turn into a lot of negative things. And I'm not saying that she has an eating disorder. I'm not saying that what she's doing is necessarily dangerous. It wasn't completely clear, but it is looking like she doesn't have the healthiest relationship with her body and her body image. And I think she has a better job of hiding it than some other celebrities, but I think it could easily go into Madonna territory. I, I remember seeing a documentary years ago about Madonna and her obsession with her body and her her fitness and stuff where it was it was literally dangerous and, and Madonna has gotten so bad and I think J-Lo has the potential to go down that road if she's not careful and I hope she doesn't I really do because I think I think I think we need to accept women aging and the beauty of women aging and things like that and that's a whole other conversation but I did notice that in the documentary I think that it was just something I wanted to point out that I do think that we're really programming girls at such a young age to feel loved and validated based on how much they can achieve or what they can make their body do and that's uh, that can lead to so many dangerous things as they grow up so that was just a little side note that i wanted to throw in probably already a long video but i guess a video talking about j-lo and all of her loves is probably gonna be a long video because i i feel like i just scratched the surface of all this but i hope you learned some things about relationships and relationship dynamics and maybe some of the unhealthy relationship dynamics and some of these celebrities and like how you can learn some lessons from these relationships that you can take into your own life and hopefully you can have happier healthier relationships because of it so so yeah if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please give it a big thumbs up and be sure you subscribe to my channel if you have any thoughts on this video or any other video requests let me know and leave a comment in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you and i love your video suggestions if you would like to connect to your dark feminine energy which can be very great at healing your masculine energy, your feminine energy, your wounded feminine energy especially, check out my Dark Feminine Energy Guided Journal. It's available on Amazon. If you want to check out any of my online courses and masterclasses, details are all in the description box below along with links to all my social media accounts. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me next time.